Hi everyone, and welcome to Bob's Wood Stuff. For episode two of joinery class, I'm going to show you a cogged lap joint. This is a stronger variant of the half lap joint for when you need to support more weight, like on rafters with purlins attached. Make sure to check the comments for timestamps of this project, and leave a comment if you'd like to see me do a specific joint. Now that I have the stock squared up, I'm going to cut these notches into one of the pieces. The notches are 3 8 in and 5 8 down. I'll mark this to get a general idea of how wide my piece is. And then I'll measure 3 8 of an inch in and notch it with my marking knife. Then use that notch to set my marking gauge. I make that mark here and on the other side. And I'm also going to measure 5 8 of an inch down from the top. Now that I've scribed those lines, I'm going to make lines perpendicular to the grain. I'll mark one side, and then I'll use my other block of wood to determine the width that this mortise is going to be. I'll also mark which side is the top side. I want a very tight fit, so I just barely want to see this scratch line. And I'll go to the other side and make a little notch. Then I'll use that line as my reference while I wrap these lines around the piece. Okay, now that I have all my waist sections marked, I'll put an X on them so I know that those are the spots I need to remove. I'm going to saw these, but I want to create a knife wall first. So I'll use a chisel to remove a little chunk and create a knife wall for a clean shoulder. I'll place a chisel right against my shoulder with the bevel going towards my waist side so I get a straight down cut and then just tap it. You don't want to tap too hard because that can shift the chisel over your line, and this line is really going to determine the fit of the piece. And then just push to take out this little chip. Okay, now that I have knife walls on all of the sides, I can cut it with my saw. Using my mini dozuki, I'll just place it inside that little notch I've created and push first to create a kerf and then pull. Staying on the waist side of your line. Now that I've sawed these corners, I need to remove the waste with a chisel. I don't want to try to take the whole thing all at once. I'll just take about an eighth of an inch off at a time. What I want to do is get to this corner so that I can chop down into there and make sure that my cut is going all the way in.
This last spot here I want to leave until the very end because that's where my line is. So I want to clean cut straight down there. It's important to cut the end grains of these fibers or else they won't come out. So the second side is quite a bit cleaner on this face than this side is, and I'm pretty happy with that. They're both okay for this joint, but I want to have clean surfaces when I can. Now that I have these stopped rabbits cut in this piece, I need to make this piece fit into those notches. Right now it's a little bit wider than that, and that's what I want. I want a very tight fit. I can test the fit by trying to get this piece to fit in the corner right there. Right now it's a little bit wide, which is what I want, so I can hand plane it down to a perfect fit. I'm just cleaning up some of the waste here so that when it fits, it goes all the way down. Is why I always write which side is the top. Super important. It's a good fit right there. Now that it fits, I need to cut a notch in this piece, like this, that will fit on that spot right there. So I'll take the top piece, put it on top of the supporting beam, and what I want to do is make it fit onto this center point right there. So I'll take a square and use that to help me align this top piece. And then on this side, I'll mark where it intersects using my marking knife. So now I know I need to remove it from that section. And then from here, I need to go down by 5 eighths of an inch. Then I'll use the square to go down to that line. Most of this work will be done with the saw, but first I need to create a knife wall so that the saw has somewhere to rest. And then here I want a chisel that's going to be wide enough to go across the whole thing. So I'll grab a wider chisel. And I rest the chisel right inside the line that I've scribed with my marking knife. Now that I have all the knife walls made, I can cut it with the saw.
Now I'll use a smaller chisel to chop out this waste, taking about an eighth of an inch off at a time, and being very careful not to go all the way to the back side. Then I'll flip it over and come in from the other side. This ensures that it doesn't blow out lower than my line. Okay, now I'm pretty much all the way to my line. I've left about a sixteenth of an inch above it on both sides. And then I'll pare that down by hand to get to that line. You could also use a router plane right here to get down there. And while doing this, make sure not to go out the backside because you could blow out the grain. Only go a little more than halfway from each side. It's important to keep the corners of this really clean so that your joint seats down all the way. One way to check that it's level is to put your ruler on the joint and if it teeters, you can see that there's a high spot in the middle somewhere. So you need to pare that down until it's making solid contact on both sides. Now that that's cut, I'll test the joint. So it's going in pretty well, but it's not seating all the way down. So I'm going to check the edges and make sure that they're clean on both of these pieces. That's a little bit closer, but it's still not quite there. So I need to clean up a little bit still. It's pretty close, but it's still not there yet. So I'm gonna clean it up some more. I'm looking from the side to make sure that this is vertical and I'm cutting it perpendicular to the piece. One thing that you can do is chamfer the edge of this a little bit so it slides on more easily. Yay! That is a perfect fit right there. It's a little bit difficult to push on by hand, but you don't need a hammer for it. and it doesn't come off by itself. So that is exactly the type of fit I'm looking for. So that's it. That's how you make the cogged lap joint. It's a much stronger variant of the half lap joint and it's really good for supporting heavy beams. Thank you so much for watching and please like and subscribe. Bye.